All right, hello everyone. JP the third, back with you. Well, actually, the volume adjusts. There we go. With some more suzerain. This is the first new recording of this game I've done in. Ooh, has it been four months? I think it has. Oi, it's been a minute. I think that's the point here that I'm trying to make. But I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you've been enjoying the uploads. We're going to finish this game pretty quickly this month because there are other games I want to at least start before the year is out. And I want to thank you for your patience with me. One of my things I said I was working on is communication and I completely failed at it in the last few months. Uh, I already told my streaming audience on another channel why that is, but I will tell you guys now what it is. I'm actually studying for a master's degree and I intended to start the program in January. However, my academic advisor advised me that it would be better for me if I started in the fall. Now, this advice came the week before August. So we pushed my date up to the week before August and I am in my 30s. It's been a long time since I was in a college classroom. So I just kind of dove in and wasn't fully prepared. So I kind of, it led to the disruption of a lot of things. So, we're getting back to regular order. And um, what that means for Venus now moving forward, we will discuss. Um, but for now, I do want to finish this game and finish some other things that I have been, I've had in the shoot for a while now. Regardless, uh, please keep an eye out for that. I'll post that in the community tab when I decide to talk about it on the site. And with that done, let's pick up where we left off. Now, in the last time, uh, in the last time, Peter resigned. Thankfully, he saved us a lot of trouble for his ways. And we were trying to figure out a vice president. <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. It is far more in my interest in my current playthrough to pick Gloria. And this is why. Lucian gives you, he, he's a decent, he's a very good strategist. And if this game allowed me to make different decisions, I would post him in a different post right now because I know what's going to happen. But uh, right now I need him to stay where he's at. Same for Alban Clavin. Clavin, uh, again, I would love to have in the government in some form. However, um, if I pick Gloria, he's the next person up to be the Speaker of, of the Assembly. So he'll be running Parliament as our ally. And Gloria was not our ally. So putting her in the Vice Presidency, it makes her more of an apparatic. And she'll be more administrative. It's, the power is iffy, constitutionally. And that's good for us. So... For all those reasons, all those, all the reasons stated, Gloria will be our first, our second VP. And I'll get into like when we get to the end of the game, I'll explain in a little bit more detail the thing, the big thing I think is missing in this game. Although I'll kind of get into, I'll get into it a little bit right now. Why not? I want the option to shuffle my cabinet. I want the option to say, okay, you're not working out, you're not working out. Let's get a few different ministers in here. That will, that will be a thing moving forward because there will be some resignations and other events that happen in the game that I can't fill. So, like, there, there is a spot that will open up that I know because I've played this game already. There will be a spot that opens up for Lucian that he would be perfect in. There will be spots that open up for Clavin, for Masum Leek, uh, for others that are our allies in parliament right now that we could bring into the fold. But the reality of the situation is that we just don't have that option in this version of the game. But if they do another suzerain or, or anything like that, the option to pick our ministers and decide on our cabinet if something's not working out is pivotal. Sorry, Lucian. Gloria Tory, who currently serves as the Vice President of Sorland, her biography has been updated. Clavin is now the speaker. 
although it doesn't say so right here. But he is perfectly positioned to help us. Uh, because it, because also Gloria allowed a lot of nationalist bills to get through, but he should be able to keep a lid on a lot of that. Lucian and I were on our way to my office. I was holding a mug of coffee in one hand and a, hand of various and a folder of various documents in the other. As we turned a corner, Lucian spoke. The Ashraf anniversary is coming up soon. The most important day for the Bluedish populace. Watani Ashraf is one of their symbols, as you know. Your presence at this event will show your desire for a more unified sorting. We will reap the benefits if you decide to go, I'm sure. You're right. Lucian nodded. Around right another corner to reach the last quarter leading to my office. Lucia suddenly stopped in front of one of the doors. The plaque that once said Vice President Peter Beckman had been removed. The door was halfway open and I could see a few workers moving boxes around the room. One of them saw us, bowed us in and changed the name tag on the door to Vice President Gloria Torrey. I heard Gloria's voice from behind me. Be careful with that box. She noticed us immediately made her way to us. Mr. President, Mr. Gallade. How's it going? Are you settled in yet? Get in there, Mr. President. That reminds me. Mr. Gallade, could you talk to the staff secretary for me to get the furniture sorted here? I have a few more boxes coming in. Lucia's upper lip curled. He and Gloria, Gloria stared, at e stared at each other down for stared each other down for a moment. I am not your servant, Mrs. Tory. It was just a simple request, Mr. Gallade. I don't know what's with you, but I don't like your attitude. That's the job of an office secretary, Mrs. Tory, not our chief strategist. I know. As I said, it was just a simple request. I do not understand why it's becoming such a huge deal. Very well. I will do it. I will see you later, Mr. President and Mrs. Vice President. I will present you with our options on the asterisk matter later. He walked out, leaving me alone with Lori. Well then, I must get back to the move. Thank you for visiting, Mr. President. I will stop by as soon as this is done. Glad to have you here, Gloria. Thank you. Gloria nodded at me and went into her room. I entered my office and asked Sylvia for a second cup of coffee to wake me up. Another lone day was waiting for me. Yeah, those two don't get along, and with good reason. Like, the conservatives did not back our proposals and more than likely fought with Lucian along the way. And that's another benefit. Having her here solidifies conservative support for me and the party. But it did come at a cost. It did damage our relationship with Lucian. Take a look at what's going on. See, Clavin is now in charge. He's making sure that uh, our party stays in line. Everything's been updated. Following the unforeseen departure of Peter Beckham, President Rain has picked Gloria Torrey as his new vice president. Mrs. Torrey is a well-known figure among the USP members, and she is the current leader of the conservative, conservative wing of the party. She has served as Speaker of the Grand National Assembly for many years and brings a proven track record to the table. Mrs. Torrey will begin serving her post immediately in the, in the administration. Oh, I'm sure the radical has a lot to say. I am sure. It is official. Gloria Torrey is the new vice president of Sorlin. Out of all the candidates, we are amazed that she was the final pick of President Reign. She certainly has experience, but the dynamic in between them leaves much to be desired as the two leading figures of our country. Regardless, we can say with certainty that Mrs. Tory will be a much better vice president than Peter Victor. Oh, that, that was actually complimentary, all things considered. Mediation of a dispute in the Gendarmerie. I arrived in the city of a sword with my new vice president, Gloria, after receiving an emergency meeting request from Yosef and Lilius. I had seen the reports of a re recent issue that rose between the Swordish police forces and the gendarmerie units in the city. The report said that an operation against a drug, drug trafficking gang in the sword failed due to miscommunication. It's not hard to guess what this meeting was going to be about. We entered, it, we entered the city hall and made our way to the second floor. I could hear Yosef and Lil Lilius' voices echoing throughout the hall. I opened the door, the doors to the meeting room. The two ministers didn't even realize. This is unacceptable! 
How dare the police meddle in the affairs of gendarmerie? It was your men who started this ridiculousness and meddled with an ongoing police investigation. Their voices were getting louder and louder. louder. Rural security is my jurisdiction, and your men were way out of, way outside of the sword. Ministers, please stop your bickering in front of Mr. President. You'll get nowhere if you continue with this behavior. Uh, Mr. President, Miss, Miss Vice President. I imagine Yosef would have a long pause there. Apologies, but Miss Graf here fails to understand her place. No, Mr. Lancia, you are the one who does not understand his place. If you continue to do so, you will pay for it one day. That's enough. Calm down, both of you. I am trying really hard to stay calm, Mr. President. Miss Graf, you are pushing your boundaries. Lilius, explain what happened. Mr. Grice was tasked with the investigation of a drug trafficking ring in downtown Vassour. We found the evidence of a drug stash located in the outskirts of the city. We had to act quickly to put an end to the criminals we have been watching for some time. So we immediately sent out police units to catch them and find the drugs in the compound. Mr. Lancy and his gendarmerie did not notify us that they were also moving against the same target. As a result, criminals got away and we lost months of progress. Isn't there a line of communication between you? There is, but the Minister of Defense decided to avoid notifying the police department about the planned raid. Same could be said about you, because the reports show that you knew about the gang and their stash in the countryside. I started tapping on the table with my fingers. How do we solve this issue so that it never happens again? I think this was the last drop. Internal security matters should be handled, handed to the Ministry of Interior completely. We are called the Ministry of Interior for a reason. We can't let any more screw-ups like this happen again. She looked at me. I want the gendarmerie to be transferred to the Ministry of Interior. What? Woman, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Joseph turned red with anger. He composed himself after a moment. I have to agree with Miss Graf. If we unify the command, our internal security will improve. There is no question for that. Look, Miss Tori, I know you are new at this, and there is much that you were not briefed about, but... I don't have to be briefed to see common sense, Miss Lancia. I'd also like to remind you that it's Miss Vice President to you. Ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. I won't hand over the gendarmerie to her. Out of the question. Do you have a better solution, Yosef? Whenever operations overlap, we should engage at a lower rank with the local officers on both sides. We could work on establishing that, but it still doesn't change the wrong system that exists now. No matter what... No matter what, we need to eliminate this gray area and modernize our internal security. Now I see where this is, what is going on here. Lilia set us up to create this incident. Lilia bit her lip. Huh! That is going too far. What proof do you have? There is no way that the police had ever, has arrived at the exact at the right time of a month-long search on the exact day and minute of the gendarmerie raid. Let's take it down a notch with the accusations. This kind of accusation is unheard of. It's nonsense. If I were you, I wouldn't believe a word Mr. Lancia says, Mr. President. Heed my word, Mr. President. When dealing with these situations, you need to always look at who gets what out of it. He's right. I won't stand idly by these utterly ridiculous and baseless accusations. I don't have time for this. What is your decision? Now, here's the thing. There, Lilius and Gloria are right. In a modern state, the security forces should be all under a Ministry of Interior. And external threats are handled by the military. However, Lilius has proven over and over again that we shouldn't trust her. This is what I was talking about earlier when I was, t I was saying that I wish we could shuffle the cabin and fire people if we didn't like them. Because I would have fired Lilius a long time ago and put somebody else in her place that I trusted to be at the head of the interior ministry. Then I would have no problem, um, I would have no problem at all transferring the gendarmerie to the interior, even if Yosef didn't like it. However, of the two of them, I know that Yosef is loyal so long as we got his back. So, given that, <laughs> I'm not going to give her any more power than need be and keep 
a certain amount of force behind someone who's loyal to, to my office. Like, that is just unfortunately common sense. There will be no change related to the Gendarmerie operations. You are making a mistake. Thank you for protecting the structure and authority of the Ministry of Defense. From now on, work together and don't fight among each other. I want capable, capable and effective members of cabinet. We will do our best. Right, Miss Silencia? That's right, Miss Graf. I left the room to attend my next scheduled meeting. Anti-corruption police, anti police investigate state of officials. The Reagan administration is going forward with its unnecessary probe into top-ranking state officials, despite Nia Morgan's anti-corruption police so far uncovering little, if any evidence of wrongdoing among the old guard. We at the Post continue to maintain that this is an improper use of government time and resources, and remain convinced that this will turn out to be nothing but a rich hunt in the end. I'm sure you think that. But yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, a lot of people who play this game do not throw Yosef any bones at all unless they're playing a dictator run. And you kind of got to. You can't just leave him out. You can't just leave him out in the cold. You got to You gotta be on his side. He will have your back as long as you have his. So when he's wrong, call him out on it. But when he's right, I mean, or when the choice affirms his loyalty, by all means, the anti-corruption police is continuing its investigation of the old car. A few ladies have been uncovered, revealing several low-level cases of corruption, as well as a high-ranking party official's possible ties to the Bernard Surface assassination. This will be duly followed up on. Oh, man. I had a meeting scheduled with Pascal to receive the annual health care report. He arrived at my office with, a sta with stacks of paper underneath both arms. Mr. President, he put them out in the paper. It's on my desk. It made a loud thud sound. I know this seems like a lot. Reviewing it shouldn't take more than a day. He measured the pile again. Or maybe two. That sounds just great. They contain very important information about the status of our health care. Salary, spending, hospital reports, whatever you like. We can go through this together. Okay, let's begin. He continued. But I don't want to bore you, so I will quickly summarize. <laughs> well, why didn't you just say that before? I breathed a sigh of relief as he put on his reading glasses to look at the document he was holding. So we have concluded our report for the year. Thanks to the allocated funds, we have improved the health care in the country overall. I have used the resources to begin a comprehensive health care reform. We have more patients treated, less waiting times, and higher treatment quality than the years before. That is great to hear. Thank you for your hard work, Pascal. This wouldn't be possible without your wise decision, Mr. President. So thank you. We are certainly on the right path to challenge even less your Vauxhall in the matter, but we are not there yet. However, give it a few more years and we might even surpass them. No, Mr. Pascal, we will surpass them. Yes, we will. Moving on. Our privatization efforts have both positive and negative effects. It helped us raise further funds that we spent on improving the system. Privatized hospitals opened in many places with top-notch equipment. But on the other hand, privatized hospitals are rather expensive, even for an ordinary middle-class citizen. And these are the expected growing pains of our healthcare system. I agree. Now, we need to look into the future. Pascal skimmed the rest of the document before putting it down. Our new funds allowed us to build dozens of new hospitals around the country. We specifically focus on areas with a high demand of health services. Good call. Thank you. I try to do my best. The investments we poured into our rural health facilities have paid off greatly. The quality of care increased due to the upgraded equipment. We were able to hire more health care staff. Excellent. The people in the countryside deserve better health services. Yes. They have been neglected for a long time due to political reasons. Not anymore. All of these efforts have resulted in a clear improvement of access to health services for our citizens. He cleared his throat. Now that I have given you the short summary, there is a very important matter to discuss. 
Leaning over to grab his briefcase, he pulled out a tan-colored package. The package was stamped with big red letters that read confidential. Pascal opened the package and brought out a few documents. He handed them over to me. I took the documents from his hand. It was a report from the Ministry of Health. Each page had the stamp on it that read, For President's Eyes Only. The report was titled, Polio Outbreak in Virginia. How bad is it? For now, it seems to be under control. We've currently put a few villages under quarantine. The total number of infected are currently 1,467. Death toll is at 23 so far. If we have more outbreaks, the result will be terrible. Thankfully, we have received the additional funding to our health care. This should curb the infection ra ratio, although I'm afraid even that might, might not be enough. This is a very serious matter, Mr. President. Lives of sordid citizens are at stake. What can we do about it? We have done our research. There is a cure. A vaccination from re was recently invented in the United Cantana by a doctor. And the formula has been made available for free in the entire world. No matter what people think about United Cantana, if the same thing happened in Arcadia, we will be paying the price for it. Thanks to the good decision made by you to increase the funding for our health care, we have the capability to produce this vaccine locally. But I'm afraid simply having the vaccine won't help. We need to make sure they are administered. We need to implement a nationwide mandatory polio vaccination policy. With your order, I can immediately get to work to ensure we are doing whatever it takes. This might seem excessive, however. It is, it, this might seem excessive. However, it is absolutely necessary. Whatever it takes to protect Swordland, do it. Excellent. Now, if you excuse me, I, will, I must get to work immediately. He got up from his seat. Thank you for your time, Mr. President. He left my office, leaving me alone with a lot of paperwork to go through. It won't make us... I'm sure there will be some issues on that. But it was absolutely necessary. We cannot, like, we are... Our economy is on the way up. We're about to solve our budget problem. An epidemic would wipe us out immediately. So there was no option here. The Ministry of Health has stopped an epidemic from spreading. Our actions have prevented a health crisis in Sorland. Vaccine mandates. They do work. What's next? Health Ministry can start new programs. There's a significant budget left at the Ministry of Health that we can further spend on several different programs in order to improve healthcare in Sorland further. Funds could be used to create a medical scholarship, build a state of art medical school, give free eye tests, or dental care. We're going to give free dental care. I could always get that piece of the budget back, but uh, we do have an election to start worrying about. The health reform aims to, to better the health services provided by adding new free care for the citizens in need. Rain Institute's, Rain Institute's new dental care program. Sorland is smiling a lot wider since Anton Rain dedicated a portion of his in increased health budget to provide free dental care for all citizens. Though seemingly expensive, the preventative measure could end up saving the government money as few resources would require hospitalization for tooth infections or life-threatening life gum diseases. And that is key, yeah, people do not neglect the importance of dental care. The assembly passes an, uh, an amendment to the tax bill of 1944 in order to increase tax revenue and reduce the excessive amount of tobacco consumption in the general populace. Section 1 of TB of 44, which has imposed a 10% tax on all tobacco packages, will be increased to 30% on all tobacco products stored in the, in the country. Section 2 will provide local industries will protect local industries by giving them a full tax exemption if products are destined to export in some other countries. Let's put that to the side for the moment. We do need to square up our budget. So I'm going to end up signing it. It's not going to be the most popular thing we've ever done, but I think it'll go along. Uh, as long as we, if, if we're at an even budget, then the tax raises will be well off. And this is consumption. Consumption taxes in a capitalist system are perfectly fine. The Fair Trade, the Fair Trade Commission that opened in Holsor today and began coordinating with the Central Bank, Natural, National Business Council, and the Ministry of Economy to get an analysis of the competition issues and partic 
potential regulation legislation. The effort to bring fairness to trade and commerce in Sorland was led by a visionary small business owner who sued Heart of Sorland in, in an unfair competition bid and won in court. So good for them. The new Supreme Council of Swordish Radio and Television has opened in Holsword and began its operation. The newly formed expert media team was housed at the interior, the interior ministry during the construction and cooperated with Minister Graff. The council experts declared that in the upcoming months there will be 19 organizational audits with up to 84 organizations reviewed by the end of the year. All right. And I say I'm about to sign this with a cigar in my... Like, this is just wrong. But we're doing what we need to do. Oh, man, I took a hit to the economy by signing the bill. Damn it. The GNA passed an amendment on tax... Uh, the Grand National Assembly passed an amendment to the tax bill of 1944 by increasing the tax by 20%. And imposing a tax exemption on local tobacco products destined for transport, President Ray has signed a bill into law which triggered a dozen complaints from working class citizens who spoke often. Health officials across the country have praised the discouragement of tobacco with increased taxes. There is a debate if the administration acted on this to increase taxes or to reduce the public health concerns, or maybe both. Let's be honest, it's both. Time to smoke less. The administrator signed the less smoke bill aimed at increasing tax income for the government and reduce the high tobacco consumption. Tobacco was recently discovered as dangerous to personal health, after researchers in United Katana pub published an international paper. There have been opposing voices on the increase of the pack of cigarettes, especially for ones that are favored by the Swordish. Uh, our economic development is fine. We're still in the green. But tobacco consumption reduced. Like, a healthier country, and we're getting our budget on <clears throat> And we're getting our budget under control. When the agricultural zone is finished, uh, that should get our economy roaring. And we hope we should be able to wipe out our remaining budget deficit. So we will attempt to support. I don't even need to read it. The Blutish ceremony. After making a stop in Dyer to meet with the governor of Burge, Felix Braun, we finally arrived at the ancient wall city of Erzurum. More than two decades ago, the city gained particular importance for the Blutish people due to their ism incident, which was the reason for our visit. It was the anniversary, it was the anniversary of the ism incident and the death of Watani Ashraf, a Blutish carpenter who was killed by the Swedish soldiers during the protest against the construction of the Saul Dam. Mm, a martyr. <laughs> the event took place in the aptly named Ism Square, just several blocks away from the site of the tragic ism incident which currently lays under Lake Saul together with the ruins of the sunken city. We drove in the presidential Cadilla as we entered the city's old paved street between its rundown buildings. Our convoy could barely fit the narrow streets, disrupting local traffic and creating a noisy chaos in this normally tranquil city. The passerby looked upon us, passersby looked upon us with concern as we drove towards the square. I must say, this was a good decision, sir. This will help ease the tensions. I hope so. If we play our cards right, I am certain. We are almost there. I can hear the crowd. I heard the chants and shouting from the outside. Lucian leaned in closer to the window, listening to their voices. They seem to be yelling Yolak Brudot. I believe that means free Brudia in, in Bludish, or something of that sort. We approached the large crowd that assembled in the square. There were probably at least 10,000 people. Our vehicle came to a stop. My driver exited the vehicle and opened the door for me. We were greeted by Mountain Lick. He wore a coat over his suit, which was marked with red and turquoise stripes of the Blutish movement flag. He moved forward to greet us. Welcome to Earthwin, Mr. President. We shook hands. Mr. Lick, Mr. Glade, welcome. Share a move into the sanctuary then. Let's go. Let's go. We started making our way into the Erzurum, sa Erzurum Sanctuary, which, which stood at the end of the square. A much smaller replica of the Arch Sanctuary in Dyer. This building emanated a mystical aura due to its age and its blackened walls. We entered the building through the ornamented, ornamented large metal gates. As we walked, the noise of the crowd started to fade out. Everyone started to get quiet for the ceremony. Thousands of candles were burning inside the sanctuary, one for each person that died in Islam. The red candle at the center was for Watani Asra. Monson gestured towards the candles. I picked up one of the candles. 
He picked up the candle for Ashraf and started walking out. Many others followed suit, including us. The atmosphere outside had completely changed. The crowd was now completely silent. We slowly walked towards Ashraf's grave. On the way, hundreds of people slowly joined us. When we arrived, he pointed at a huge standing torch above the grave. We'll do it together. We lit the torch together. I turned around and realized the sheer amount of people who were following us. They were all looking at me, waiting to hear what I would say. Brothers and sisters, we're here to mourn Watani Ashraf and many others who, lost, who have lost their lives. I am not standing before you today as the president. I'm standing here as one of you. I share your hatred and anger. I feel it too, I assure you. Like a red hot metal, it takes a long time for it to cool down. But I look at the lost lives and think, what would they want? An old man from the crowd yelled, he is right! Thank you, old man. Let me tell you one thing. I dream of a swordman, a truly united swordman, a country where being a blue or a sword does not matter. Let this, let this be a testament of our unity for future generations. Let's stand together as blued and sword. I need help from each and every one of you to make this country a better place for everyone. Warning will come. There's no reaction from the crowd. Only silence. And let's admit, Mr. President, that was a good speech. I was afraid that they wouldn't react at all, which is why. <laughs> Excuse me. I was afraid they wouldn't react at all, so that's why I'm like, I'm not saying, are you with me? <laughs> because if I said, are you with me, and nobody said anything, that would have just been really awkward. Thank you. He sent it in his hand for me for a handshake. Eh, come in here, old man. Instead of going for the handshake, I spread out my arms and hugged him. Suddenly, the whole crowd started clapping. Thank you for this, Mr. President. I don't think the people of Erzurum will ever forget this. You have become the first and only president who was brave enough to come to Erzurum and pay respect for the Ism victims. Hope this will be the start of a new era. Thank you. Lucian rushed near me. Sir, it's time to go. We started making our way back to the convoy. Well done, sir. This will prove very useful in the upcoming elections. Time will tell. Lucian bowed his head. We entered our vehicles and started making our way back home from Earthland. That was just a really good moment. Brotherhood of the People, President Reigns surprised the country we had attended at the Ashraf anniversary. He joined the vigil alongside Mount Selek on the day Sorland remembers Watani Ashraf. He has delivered a heartfelt speech that resonated among the crowd. We hope that his words won't just say as words, known as the Brotherhood of the People. I like, I'm kind of a middle of the road conservative. The fact that the radical likes me is a bit concerning. I'm just saying. A new initiative by the Swedish government and the Baludish leaders have called for a ceasefire and easing of tensions leading to reconciliation between both sides. We are just speeding along here, actually. All right, get a briefing. I walk to the white room with a cup of coffee in my hand. I'm drinking a lot of it these days. My vice president has scheduled a meeting on the current political situation. I opened the door and entered the room. Gloria immediately stood up. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning. I want to provide you with some quick updates on the current political situation. She pulled out a few documents from a briefcase and laid them out on the table. Mr. Hall has reported to me that he is currently putting the finishing touches on his new economic plan. See, like, this is the role of vice president in the country. There is, I think, a... There was some post, I think it was a STEAM discussion that was asking why Sorlin didn't have a prime minister. And really it should, the vice president should be the prime minister. Because that's how, Gloria's acting how Peter should have acted for, really. But, that's a whole different matter. He said he wanted to solidify the plan before it is presented to you. 
He'll schedule a meeting soon to go over our options. Simon can pull it off, I'm sure. He has never failed me before. Mr. Hall knows what he's doing. I'm sure he will deliver as well. She closed the folder and put away the document. Next up on the docket, next it's time to talk about our election prospects. There's a sharp, soft knock on the door. I was all right with you that I invited Mr. Glade to this portion of the meeting. How are you two getting along these days? He's still having some trouble accepting my authority, but I think he's coming around. Gloria went to the door, Lucian walked in. Mr. President, Ms. Vice President, and Lucia seemed still resented my choice of vice president, he didn't show it. His tone was nothing but cordial and professional. The three of us sat down. Gloria handed out a new set of documents. Miss Tory, I'll let Mrs. Tory, I'll let you take the lead on this. Gladly, Mr. Gallade. I'm sure they've come to an understanding. Like, that's one of the unspoken parts about this part of the game. If uh, Gloria is next up after I'm done being president, she probably was like, look, you don't have to like me, but if, as long as we get along to get things done, you'll be the next one in the chair. So that's just, like, that's me just kind of wish casting a bit onto this. I just received the results of the voter poll commissioned by Peter Beckton shortly before his, uh, shall we say, departure. To put it in plain language, it's not great. Bad even. The USP stands to lose up to 20% of the vote compared to last time around. Tell it to me straight. Do we still have a chance? We still have a year to gain more votes, but we've got to think strategically, which presumably is why you have retained the services of your chief strategist. Do you have something to add, Lucian? No, pardon the interruption. Gloria shuffled some pages around. Looking at the demographics of the voters polled, you've fallen out of favor with conservatives. Less than half of them are likely to vote for you. The liberal base appears divided, but you do have a considerable number of supporters there. For better or worse, you certainly aren't popular with the nationalists. Like, the economy is going great, and we reformed the Constitution, and everybody hates us. If you ever had any support from socialists, you've completely lost it now. Unsurprisingly, none of the British poll respondents say they were planning on voting for you. Lastly, we can't expect votes from centrists or unaffiliated voters unless we do something to win them over. It sounds like we're doomed. Not necessarily. Listen, I'm aware I was selected as vice president at least partly because of my access to the USP conservative wing. I can give you some insight into gaining more conservative votes, if you wish. Go ahead. This women's rights commission of yours. I did warn you against moving too fast on that front. Giving women's rights activists any, everything they want at once is guaranteed to scare conservatives off. If all else fails, fall back on Swedish military might. I'm personally not a fan of jingoism, but it works on certain segments of the base. Mr. Rand is nothing if not a patriot. I rally the troops. Anyway, that's my advice for what it's worth. Thank you. Lucian, your thoughts. Lucian smiled and bowed his head slightly. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Still a little touchy there. This may sound like common sense, but a, convincingly, a convincing enough campaign can succeed where policies fail. Even if you've opted not to focus on your campaign at the moment, I still advise you to seize every chance for exposure that you can. I'll take that into account. Good. One more thing. There is a not insignificant portion of undecided voters who don't care who occupies the Maroon Palace as long as the economy is running smoothly. Propping up the economy just ahead of the election is a surefire way to win them over. It's all on Simon, then. Partly, yes. Our country seems to be stable so far, but we should avoid further crisis if we want to come out, come out of this term strong. There are some worrying news. The Lothberg Group is up to something. My informants have been talking about frequent meetings happening between the oligarchs. This covers most of it. Great. I've heard enough. Gloria, was that all for today? Yes, that's everything on my end. Good work, both of you. I'll see you shortly. I left the room to attend my next meeting. The people hate me. I'm doing everything right, and the people hate me. 
we still have yet to turn it around, so we'll see what happens. Like, again, if I have the economy roaring and everything else going on, I think we'll be okay. But it's always... But Gloria's here to help us kind of link up the uh, conservatives. Like, we should have... Like, a surefire way to win would have been keeping the electoral threshold where it was. Then people would have no vote, no choice but to vote for me. Um, the fact that they have options now... Um, that's part of the problem, frankly. The administration has imposed that everyone in the country has to be ma- vaccinated against polio disease. The disease barely claimed more or less than more or less a thousand people in Bridget. Why is it necessary for the whole country to spend our hard-earned rent for something that is nowhere near us? The speed was spreading from Valen to Bridget. It seems that these illegal immigrants from Valen not only caused chaos in our society, but also brought with them a deadly disease. As such, it is more than clear that the solution to this problem is to completely quarantine the entirety of Persia and increase our border control. Instead, President Rain is forcing everyone to pay for something we don't currently need. I mean, if you don't want to get a ve- polio vaccine, fine. Get the disease and die. The president of the tribe of action stops polio in the track. The polio disease, which was spreading wildly in Zealand, has crossed over to the Persia region. However, thanks to the administration's foresight, large quantities of vaccine have been, secu- have been secured. A mandatory vaccine policy and a mandatory vaccine policy was implemented to com- combat the sickness. The Ministry of Health, Pascal Benawal, has delivered a statement to, the compliment, to compliment President Anton Rain on his decisive actions, which, which led to the ongoing preventative measure. I still have a chance to win people around. The Ministry of Health, Pascal, Ministry of Health, Pascal Benawal, has submitted a heartening report. It states that the polio disease is controlled inside of the Virgin region. He said it he stated that we have flattened the curve of infection within the Bergen region and with the mandatory vaccine, it would be hard for the disease to spread into other regions within the country. Good. So that is taken care of. Uh, industrial expansion. Jesus. No, my that will implode my budget. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. If I if I um, if I didn't do the free dental care, it would be different. But I, I can't. No. That could support several key industries in the country through state investments. And I can't. I gotta let that one go. Ah, uh, if I had a if I had a surplus budget, or even like, if I was dead even on the budget, it would be completely different. But that would be negative three. Like, I would not recover from that. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too close to... Um, I'm too close to let it go. I'm too close to do anything like that. I've, I've, I'll, it'll have to wait. And also, I like that there's a... Um, on a completely different subject. I like that there's... A negative impact from some of the things you do, even if it's the right thing. That's one of the things about politics. Like, you can do the right thing. That doesn't mean, um, that doesn't mean anything in the long term. That doesn't mean that voters will back you. Hegel would take all the necessary steps. In the televised address, Chancellor Emmer- Emmerich Hegel claimed intense, intensive fighting was taking place between the Agnolian forces and the locals of H- Helgeland resulting in the massacres of ethnic Vols living on the island. He portrayed the conflict as a national struggle and compared it to the independence wars of the former colonies in Rica. Hegel said, Valsland, as the guarantor of the Helgeland security, as the guarantor of Helgeland security, will take all the necessary steps to prevent mass atrocities committed against the islanders. Van Horten said in, said in, said in, excuse me, said in a television television interview for that Vagslandians must withdraw their harassment squad from the Marquee Sea before any diplomatic talks can happen. Stumbles all over that one. See what's up. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. What? No, I can't. Oh, man. My wife is going to crap on me.
I can't, I can't, I can't. My budget would go completely out of control. Like, oh man, <laughs> oh man, why, why is there a negative two government budget on this? I just said I couldn't implode my budget. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm capping it, I'm capping it here. I, I got, I need time to think this through. I need to strategize this. Like, cause I don't think we're gonna have any more major tax bills that will get us to an even economy. And even then, like, <sighs> Gloria literally just said we were losing votes on this issue. I, <sighs> oh, man. I'm going to hold this off for another episode. I need, I need, I need to think. I, I can't do a breakneck decision on this. So in the next episode, I will either sign or veto the Women's Liberation Act. And look, look, they, look what they packaged all together. Why couldn't these be two different bills? Like, I need, I wish I could, I wish I could have had a hand in actually designing this. I would have done two different bills because you can cut sections three and four and make that an entirely different piece of legislation and do section one and five, not, not section one and five, sections one through two are fine. If that was a bill by itself, it would not have any government budget implications and it is something that would need to be done. But paid maternity leave, state subsidized daycare centers for mothers, of total reform of the education system, like, I, my, the budget would not recover. And I know this is a thing, I know I can already hear this, like, these are things that need to be done. It's, 19, it's the 1950s. I understand in 2021 thinking this is obvious and should be done, I know, but, ah, uh, a, I need to survive. B, I, my budget would implode. It would not survive. I don't remember this being... I don't remember the budget implications of the last time. Like, I don't think that was a thing. I'm going to give this some thought and decide how I want to approach this. I'm going to be sleep. I may end up sleeping on the couch for a while if I don't sign this bill. But at the same time, I don't think there's any budget recovery. I don't think there's no budget recovery. I will lose the conservative wing of the party entirely, even with Tory as the vice president. I like, oh man. Oh man. I'm going to give this some thought. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't such thus far. And yes. After all this time, we are ending on another cliffhanger. Go figure. I'll see y'all in the next one.